the problem with the ultimate fighter what's up guys in today's video i want to talk about my problem with the ultimate fighter season 31 team mcgregor versus team chandler now again as i preface in many of my videos this is my opinion if you like the ultimate fighter as a show that's perfectly fine i actually like the show i just think it's flawed and you've seen a lot of criticism of the ultimate fighter this season in particular because i feel like a lot of the criticism you know in the past seasons like the nunez pena season or uh, Alexander Volkanovsky versus Brian Ortega it was just we don't have the right coaches and now we can't really use that excuse right as to why the ultimate fighter just isn't hitting like it used to for a lot of people now this is actually the first ultimate fighter season that I've actually ever watched and I was a bit disappointed in it in the past seasons I did think you know we just don't have the best coaches for it you need more trash talk in there you need more of a rivalry and I was like Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler's not a big rivalry or anything like that but Michael Chandler will bring something out of Conor McGregor, kind of like Uriah Faber did. Doesn't need to be a big trash talker to have Conor McGregor, you know, be great and have the season be entertaining. But Conor McGregor hasn't carried the season. It hasn't been the most entertaining. I think one of the flaws with the show is they focus so much on the fighters when in reality, I think the fans are watching it for the coaches. And that's one of the problems, especially when you have Conor McGregor as a coach for the Ultimate Fighter in a season is most of the fans are just here to watch conor mcgregor and they're not here to watch the fighters and when you're focusing primarily on the fighters which is perfectly fine it's about the fighters it's about the ultimate fighter it just doesn't pique people's interest at all now as i said earlier this season's getting a lot of criticism particularly on social media a lot of people just saying things like you know this season's terrible not stop watching um during like episode one stop watching after episode three and things like that you know i have watched it i do find it entertaining but as i said earlier it's just not hitting like i thought it would i was really hyped for this i don't know what i thought was going to happen though i gotta be honest I, my expectations may have been way too high i don't know why i think just conor mcgregor on the ultimate fighter the idea of it um some people criticize you know the michael chandler choice of a opposing coach when that was made i did not criticize it at all i actually thought it was like the best one but a lot of people are like, oh, the trash talk won't be that good. And to be fair to them, we haven't seen the most trash talk. But I think you don't even need that much trash talk. We just need more entertainment. And it just hasn't been that entertaining, in my opinion. And I have many reasons for that. And one of them is that the concept just may be outdated. When The Ultimate Fighter first came out, this is years ago now. The Ultimate Fighter is much like just like a mid-2000s, early 2000s reality TV type of show. And I think something about it just doesn't hit in the modern market like it used to i don't know if reality shows rating i don't watch like reality shows but i don't know if the ratings for those have plummeted in years or or what it's like but something about the ultimate fighter maybe it's just they're sticking to their guns kind of with the old school kind of style of the reality show and the ultimate fighter feel because it does feel like you're watching the ultimate fighter when you watch it but it also feels a bit outdated but not in a good way in my opinion it feels like it's just not current or like like it should matter to us i also think their choice of fighters was very weird they did veterans versus prospects which i think is just unless you execute that perfectly which is going to be very difficult it's just going to be extremely flawed in my opinion and i think that because i think we need real prospects a lot of the prospects that they chose are just fighters who have never been in the ufc or fight on the regional scene with decent records an example of that is carlos vera who is 35 years old has a nice record on the regional scene is a good fighter but i think He's a guy you should put on the contender series, especially with his older age. I think if you're going to do prospects, you got to get these younger guys who are like in their mid 20s, who are like really good, like really high level, because veterans are always going to have an advantage over prospects, no matter what, because they have so much experience, UFC experience as well on the ultimate fighter that is high stakes and his nerves. You can't have like situations like that. Like Carlos Vera is 35 years old. He fought Brad Katona, who's the veteran of the UFC. Who is 31 years old which is just stupid in my opinion i think if you're going to do the prospects veterans thing you've got to tap into the young versus old kind of market not too old um i i do like their choice for some of the veterans and their ages i think it was good you know brad catone is a good veteran i think he was a good fighter to have on the show but i think when you have veterans who are kind of mid-level fighters who got released from the ufc and the prospects that you get aren't that good it just makes these veterans get easier wins and make that it makes the outcomes super predictable it became very clear around like episode like four or five that just team mcgregor was likely going to get swept or maybe be able to steal one we saw the guy from boston shout out he was able to steal one 
Um, I wouldn't even say steal because he had actually had a great performance against Hunter Azure, was able to get the knockout in that one. And that was awesome. Seeing Team McGregor get a win, right? Maybe that's the flaw of the season. There was just no balance. But it shows it's, you know, it's real. But it was just weird. The Team McGregor not winning anything. I think they were down like 7-0 or something like that. And Chandler was just dominating. It it was like every time you'd watch it, it would just be like, ah, time to watch another prospect lose to, you know, a hungry veteran who's, you know, had good UFC experience. They picked some good veterans. Hunter Azure had some good UFC fights. He was in the UFC for a bit. Brad Katona as well. That's a good veteran. I like some of the veterans they chose a lot more than the prospects that they chose. And it really just seems like the fans aren't interested in the season at all. And um, I think it had so much interest when it was announced, but like around episode one, I feel like the interest already was low for some reason. I don't know why. I also think it's weird how it's pre-recorded. If something like The Ultimate Fighter was live, it'd just be crazy. I don't know if that's actually possible. That could be literally impossible to do. Um, and edit and stuff like that but if the ultimate fighter was live maybe that could be something a bit more entertaining like the dana white's contender series you watching that live and that brings me to my next point which is the dana white's contender series which is another show that you know dana white and the ufc produce it's on espn plus i'm actually a huge fan of that show i became a big fan last season now i became a ufc fan in 2019 so i didn't watch you know the previous seasons with sean o'malley and other great fighters, but we've seen literally great fighters come from the Dana White's Contender Series. We've seen great fighters come from the Ultimate Fighter as well, but in recent years, I feel like it's not as much. I also feel like, and we've seen good fighters from the Ultimate Fighter as of recent as well, like Ricky Tercios and Brady Heastan, Treshawn Gore, and Brian Battle as well is a really good fighter, Mohamed Usman. But I feel like the Dana White's Contender Series is producing better fighters at a better rate, and it's also a thing like, you watch five fights on the Dana White's Contender Series where you're in each episode, there's five fights, right? So you're watching five fights where 10 fighters have a chance to make it to the UFC and they're trying to win. It's more of an entertaining concept at this point. And I think the reality TV thing doesn't really relate to the hardcore fan base. And a lot of the casuals, I don't know, maybe got tired of the idea of the Ultimate Fighter. I also think the Ultimate Fighter is a tournament system, right? When you watch like the early episodes, it doesn't matter as much because you're just watching the beginning of a tournament. And you may be like, yeah, but tournaments are exciting. I think tournaments are really exciting for martial arts fans when it's the top of the top. If we're watching the top 16 lightweights in a tournament to crown the UFC lightweight champion, that would really be entertaining. I would be hyped for that. But when you're watching, you know, like a bunch of like 16 lower level fighters, you know, they're good fighters, but they're not. We know, like, we've seen a lot of these veterans in the UFC. You know, they're like 3-2, three 3-3 and, two, three and three in the UFC and things like that. We've seen them before in the UFC. That's just not going to hit, you know, the casual market, really. It'll hit the casual market probably a bit more than it'll hit the hardcore audience who have seen these fighters before. They're not that interested in a tournament. You don't watch a fight and it's like, oh, winner, this goes to the UFC. And also they do the finale of it, not even on the Ultimate Fighter. The finale of it is on an event. It'll actually be at UFC 292 in Boston. But I think that could be a flaw as well. It's just watching a tournament, like the early fights, they matter because you advance and someone gets kicked out, which is obviously entertaining. But I think when you watch Dana White's Contender Series, it's simple. You're watching a fight. You know, they're each trying to make it to the UFC. And sometimes we see five people awarded UFC contracts on the Dana White Contender Series. It debuted last night for the new season. We saw five contracts. Tom Nolan had an unbelievable performance. Peyton Talbot, Kevin Borjas. It really feels like I believe in these fighters more than I believe in the prospects on uh, the Ultimate Fighter. And maybe that's just because the prospects aren't winning, or maybe that's just because they're not getting the best prospects. It really seems like they do all the work for Dana White's contenders here to really get those prospects. Maybe they're low key trying to kill off the Ultimate Fighter so they can promote Dana White's contenders here because Dana White loves this show. He talks about it all the time, obviously. It's his show, kind of. It's got his name in it. The contender series is great. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about is maybe the contender series is the new thing for UFC fans. I think that tournament concept just cannot work all the time when you're relying on lower level guys and they they're just not interesting to the hardcore fan base the hardcore fan base is interesting in the Dana White's contender series because they haven't seen them and stuff now other ultimate fighter seasons don't use as many veterans obviously this was veterans versus prospects but I just think they did that wrong and it's crazy how many people get contracts on Dana White's contender series it's because truly how impressive they are they gather the best prospects in MMA. It really feels like when you watch them, they're a way higher level than the ones that we see on the Ultimate Fighter majority of the times. 
And I think the Contender Series is truly the new show for the future of MMA and UFC fans. This was the problem with the Ultimate Fighter, in my opinion, my problems with it. What do you guys think about the Ultimate Fighter this current season? What do you guys think about the show overall, past seasons? How does this season relate to past seasons? Comment all that below. What do you think about it? What do you think about Dana White's Contender Series and the future of kind of shows in the UFC market? Because I do think like TV shows and stuff can work a lot for the UFC and we've seen Ultimate Fighter historically do very well and the Contender Series really feels like it's growing. We see it trending on Twitter or X or whatever it's called every time it's on now. I think that the Contender Series is a show. What do you guys think about this season of the Ultimate Fighter? Is it flawed? Is it not? This was my problem with the Ultimate Fighter and thanks for watching this video.